Hello, and welcome to this third film in my Conducting Fundamentals series. This film is about conducting posture. Now, our posture affects everything we do, and the conductor is not an exception to this. Perhaps, however, in the field of music, a more obvious example is that of a singer. So if you could imagine a singer who is standing badly, it will be pretty obvious that they will have difficulty breathing well. And as soon as you have difficulty breathing well, you will have difficulty singing well. For the conductor, it's the same thing. Essentially, just remember this. Good posture facilitates good conducting. OK, so what are the practicalities of getting and retaining a good posture? Firstly, I'm going to scan you down to my feet so we can see what they get up to to start with. OK, so firstly, simply stand square on to the orchestra, front on, so that your feet are parallel facing the orchestra. Um, just to mention, you do occasionally find somebody suggest that a right-handed conductor can lead with their right foot or a left-handed conductor lead with their left foot. I personally feel this leads to potential instability and just as importantly it looks rather unstable from the point of view of the orchestra. So I would suggest you keep your feet parallel. And then you want to stand up to your full height. Now, if you're seven foot, be seven foot. If you're five, six, like me, be five, six. The only difference being that I will need to use a rostrum more often than my taller colleagues. Um, but in making sure that you are standing tall, please be careful not to lock your knees. Now, you may well be aware of this issue. Um, if you're not, what I suggest you do just for a moment is actually just to lock your knees by making them go backwards so that your legs are really locked into a firm position. You will then, I'm sure, feel tension in the small of your back and potentially further up, right up to your neck. Now, if you just release your knees forwards into a comfortable position, not so that you've gone saggy with your knees, but just release them forward, slightly forwards. You'll feel that tension disappear. And that's what we want, the lack of that tension. What you could do now is just to shift ever so gently the weight on the soles of your feet. So I'm just going ever so slightly to rock forwards and backwards. I'm just feeling the weight of my body shifting onto different parts of my feet, slightly to my left, slightly to my right, and I'm going to come back to the middle and stop where I feel most comfortable. My feet, by the way, I should have said initially, are about shoulder width apart and probably facing ever so slightly outwards. It will dep depend on your own physique, probably not straight like that. Most people's feet go ever so slightly outwards when they're in a comfortable, natural position. OK, so with that, you want to end up feeling grounded. Uh, you want to feel firmly in contact with the floor. OK, so now you've found a good grounded position. What I suggest you do is just very s slightly swing round, quite gently, swivelling, keeping your feet planted essentially in the position that we talked about a moment ago, just to feel loose in the middle of your body, swing your arms gently from side to side, and you are ready to go. If you watch video of great conductors, Study their posture. I think you'll find that often they have a very centred, grounded posture. And also, 
if in the future you find you're having problems with some aspect of your conducting, it's worth remembering your posture. It might be that something you're doing is affected by the way that you are standing. So just check your posture. And in fact, not just when you're having problems, check it again and again and again so that it becomes second nature to stand really well. Thanks for listening. See you again next time when we'll be talking about how to hold the baton and doing some basic baton exercises.